And I'm a former cancer researcher and that I had never been told that we had changed our demographics seemed really ridiculous because I had really been taught that cancer was really a genetic disease with gen gene injury being at the heart and soul of how cancer happens. And we have a very heterogeneous genetic population in the United States. We've got Asians and Indians and you know we've got a lot of Eastern, uh, Eastern European, Northern European, Western European. We've got this melting pot genetically and so for us to be able to do something to our environment over this short 11 year period to completely reverse this map was a stunning finding and it really set me back to thinking more intensely about the nutrition that we, I was teaching to think that maybe is there something with the nutrition that's been involved because at this point by 2010-11 I, I knew very well that, that nutrition and the microbiome was a huge piece of why cancer was happening in a human being to begin with. And so it really spoke to the reality that, man, we, we have done something to our food chain. We have done something fundamental to our environment that would lead to this massive reversal in public health in this country. And so we took the glyphosate spraying maps, but interestingly, they don't superimpose on our cancer death maps until you pull in the tributaries of the Mississippi River and you suddenly realize that we're collecting some 80, 85% of all the glyphosate sprayed in the United States into a single water system. And glyphosate is unique that it's a water soluble toxin, which means it's gonna travel through this whole water cycle that the farmers talk about and we should be thinking about all the time in medicine is how does water move through the body? How does water move through the planet? It's fascinating that biology seems to demand this 70% fraction of water. Earth is 70% water in its surface area. The human body is 70% water. And so we've got this really consistent finding that water is this inherent foundation to life itself. And now you start looking at the stories that are coming out of the dead zone in the ocean at the end of the Mississippi River. It's now the size of Rhode Island and you get, we're getting these massive devastating algae blooms in the lakes in, in, the, in the Midwest, all the way up towards Canada, and it's killing the fish life and everything else as we're, we're altering the ecosystems within these water bodies. And so it seems to all be tying together now into an obvious story of, wow, we started using a contaminant that would kill the microbiome, both in the soil and in humans, and it would be a water-soluble one such that it would move through the ecosystem. 75% of the rainfall in the south is now contaminated with glyphosate. 75% of the air we breathe contaminated with glyphosate. And so we have this little tiny molecule that, that's gumming up the, the gears of life itself. It's, it's stopping on so many levels the normal functions of resilience. And we're becoming a very unresilient and damaged species and we're dying very quickly. And of course we're only one of many other species. We've apparently eradicated some 50% of our biodiversity uh, in the last you know, 50, 60 years. And so that devastating fact that we are killing ecosystems to the point of extinction is a harbinger of our own progress as humans. We, we are moving quickly towards this extinction event where our fertility is dropping. One in three males in the United States now infertile, one in four women. And so as fertility drops, disease rises, children get sick, we move from 4% of the entire U.S. population with chronic disease in the 1960s to 46% of our children with a chronic disease now in 2018 here.